Now I'd like to introduce to you um, a TV news anchor that served longer than any other TV news anchor in the history of this country for 43 years. He was in the, in the, um, the family rooms, the bedrooms of the homes of most of us here in the state of Utah. He is one of our most cherished celebrities and a good friend of mine, Dick Norris. Thank you, Brian. It's indeed a pleasure and honor for me to be here with you today. This is my first protest. I've always, I've, I've always had to kind of stay down the middle of the road and just talk about who's on what side. But I am proud to be here. This is uh, a subject that uh, is very dear to me. As many of you may know, a year ago this month, I was battling throat cancer, undergoing radiation and chemotherapy. Cancer for the third cancer I've had in my life that I've had to battle. All three, all three cancers related to respiratory ailments. I was subjected to Egypt Orange in Vietnam. That could have been the problem. But for 50 years, I've lived in this wonderful city and call it home. And for the past 30, as you know, when the air started to go, it went suddenly and fast. And I have had sinus and respiratory problems every year since I moved here and since that started anyway. And so it's kind of a gut feeling. Actually, it goes a little higher than my gut. It's a deep throat feeling. <laughs> but if you, can, if you can see it, if you can see the air, if you can taste the air, and if it burns when you go outside, chances are that damn air is bad. I don't care if it's moderate. Don't give me a moderate day. Don't give me an unhealthy day. Just stop. Just stop it. There's a way to do that, and the technology certainly is, is, is there. And we should have had this conversation 20 years ago. It has seemed to me that the legislature over the years, and I've seen every legislature in the 43 years I was on the news, has been more involved with the availability of alcohol in this state and who can marry in this state than it has with the air we breathe. When I first moved here, there was not a more gorgeous place on earth than the Salt Lake Valley. There still isn't. We just need this stuff out of here. And there's a way to do it, so let's get started. Right now. And let's start. The doctor stopped short of saying, of course, exactly what triggered my cancer. But other than to say there was a bad cell in my throat and something I breathed, or something I did, kicked it off. It could have been there for years, but something kicked it off. Yeah, something could have kicked it off. Look around, what is that something? And think of all the young children and the elderly. I'm in that elderly group now, walking around, not being able to go outdoors, not being able to come downtown and enjoy our wonderful new downtown outside because of the air they breathe. It's ridiculous. And I want to see a stop to it and the air cleaned up. Thank you for being here today. I'm glad to be a part of this. I know, I know that each one of you I have known throughout my career that each one of us, we may sometimes stop and think, what can I do to help? Individually, I'm nothing. But yes, you are. Look at each of the individuals out here. Together, you pack a big wallop. And we can do something about this. And think about that. This is an election year. When you go to the yeah. poll in November, think about who you're voting for and make sure you do go to the polls. And let's decide who we want in elective offices that care about our air, our water, our environment. One of the great words of wisdom, and we live by words of wisdom in this valley, should be how we treat our planet. First of all, on that list of words of wisdom. Yeah! How do we take care of our planet? I'm thinking we're not doing a good job of that. And the church and everybody else ought to be out enforcing how we take care of the place we live. 
as as important to God as any one other thing. I want to move along and introduce some other people. The Lord, when I was in Vietnam in 1967, I mentioned it briefly that I would have told the age of orange business. I had probably 150 interviews of young Utah soldiers and sabers and airmen and Marines that I brought home. And every one, every one of those young men and women, in some cases, not so much as it is now for most of the men then, would say, Dick, Will you call my mom when you get home? And I said, yeah, well, what's the number? I wrote down the number. And I spent a year after I got back calling the mothers. But the reason I bring that up is the moms have a great influence on our society, probably the greatest. I love them. I, I called my mother first, then I called the other moms. But I want to introduce now Cherie Shudell, who is president of the Utah Moms for clean air. And, uh, and Amanda, Amanda Gatti, co-founder of Athens for Clean Air. Okay, thank you again. I love you, man. I'm proud of you.